Okay, the translation we're doing now is one that I've called Keeping Promises, and it's by Cicero. This is from, uh, I think it's passage 135. It's uh, a little bit later on, and it's uh, perhaps a little bit more difficult than some of the other ones that we've been looking at. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. Pause this, take a look at it, and then we'll go through the translation together. Okay, this first bit then. Quid quod tesius exegit promissum a Neptuno? Qui cum tres optationes Neptunus dediset, optavit interitum Hippolyti fili cum is patri suspectus eset de noerca, quo optato impetrato thesius in maximis fuit luctibus? So this first bit. What then? What about when Theseus exeget, obtained promissum, a promise, from Neptune? Qui, connecting relative here, literally to whom, when Neptune had given three wishes. I don't think we want to say that, but let's make it sound a little more fluent. When Neptune had offered three wishes to him, had given three wishes to him, optavit, he chose the death in teritum Hippolyti Fili, the death of his son Hippolytus. Cum, since is he, i.e. Hippolytus now, was suspected by his father of making advances towards De Noerca, of making advances towards his stepmother. I like the fact that the Romans had a word, Noerca, for this particular thing. Uh, it sort of rather implies that it was more common than one would hope. Quo optato impetrato tesius in maximis fuit luctibus. Having got his wish, literally with which wish having been got, having been achieved, we had that word today, earlier on actually during a lesson, um, where we were doing Cicero's talk about Pythias and Canius with the fishermen. So, having got this wish, Theseus, I've said here, fell, or no, I just said went, into the maximis superlative, into the greatest morning. This is the favourite, uh, the famous, sorry, story of Hippolytus and his stepmother, Phaedra, um, whom, uh, who falls in love with her stepson, Hippolytus, when he is refusing to, um, to sort of be with any women. He, by being very loyal to Diana and remaining chaste, offends the goddess Aphrodite, who in turn, therefore, decides to get her own back by causing his stepmother, Phaedra, to fall in love with him. The next part. Quid quod Agamemnon cum devoviset Diana quod in suo regno pulcerimum natum eset illo anno immolavit ificineam quia nihil erat eo quidem anno natum pulcrius. This next bit. How about, that's rather um, probably overly fluent actually here, but how about when Agamemnon cum devos devoviset, the temporal clause in the blue perfect subjunctive, when he had promised to Diana literally that which was born the most beautiful in his kingdom, Ilo Anno, that year. We don't want to say that, that sounds appalling. When he had promised to Diana the most beautiful thing, the pulcherimum, quad, the most beautiful thing, natum eset, that was born in suo regno, in his kingdom, Ilo Anno, twab, time when abbotted there, that year, comma, immolavit ifigenea, where we get the word immolation from. He burnt Iphigenia alive. Queer, because nothing nihil pulcrius, more beautiful, natumerat, was born eo anno, that year. This is obviously the start of the Orestia tragedy. So this is when Agamemnon, some people talk about Agamemnon having sacrificed um, his daughter in order to get the winds, in order to sail over to fight against the Trojans, and the alternative form of that myth is that he had upset the goddess Diana, not really through his own fault, and that he had to sacrifice his daughter in order to appease um, in order to appease the goddess for that. Either way, it was what sort of triggered off the series of disasters that was to befall Agamemnon and his family. Obviously, Agamemnon would then later on get killed by his own wife, Clytemnestra, who then, in turn, obviously, their daughter, Electra, would need to avenge that death, etc., etc. 
promissum potius non faciendum, quam tam titrum facinus admittendum fuit. It is better that the promise, potius non faciendum, we have a gerundive here, which I'm sure you've all noticed, it is better that a promise not non faciendum, not be kept, quam tam, that such a dreadful crime, again it's a gerundive because it's passive, be committed. A promise ought rather not to be kept, non faciendum, passive there, agreeing with the promise, ought not to be kept, rather than that such a dreadful crime be committed. Ergo et promissa non facienda nonumquam neque semper deposita redenda. Ergo, so some nonumquam, our almost of our word with almost an idea of the of the Latin litotes, not none, but here we would say some promises non facienda should not be kept and deposita and deposits or debts should not neque redenda be returned. We can tell that these are both gerundives because they end with the letter A, that plural, whereas a gerund must always be singular. So some promises should not always be kept, therefore not none, some promises ought not to be kept, and deposits should not always be returned, redenda. Si gladium quis apud te sana mente deposueret, repetat in saniens redere peccatum sit, Officium non redere. See, if someone, conditional here, if someone has left, quis deposit has left a gladium, a sword, with you in a sane mind, while in a sane state of mind, present participle ablative absolute there, repetat insaniens, while insane, he asks for it back, Sit peccatum redere. It is wrong, redere, to give it back. Non officio. It is not right to give it back. This is taken, of course, from Cicero's De Officio. Uh, De Officia, sorry, about duty. Quid, si is qui apud te pecuniam deposueret, bellum inferat patria, redasne depositum, non credo. Facias enim contra republicam, quae debet esse carissima. What? If someone, si is qui, if someone who has qui deposuerit, left money apud te, with you, inferat, declares war on the fatherland, this fatherland that Cicero cares so much about, do you redasne depositum, do you return his deposit? Non credo, I think not. For facias, and in facias, for you are acting contra rem publicam, against the republic, quae debet, which ought, esse, to be most dear, the most important, carissima, superlative them. Sic multa quae honesta natura videntur esse, temporibus fiunt non honesta, facere promissa, stare conventis, redere deposita commutata utilitate fiunt non honesta. Sic thus Multa, many things, quae, which videntur esse, which are seeming to be honest, honesta natura, honest by nature, fiunt, become, by their circumstances, dishonest. Facere promissa, to keep your promises, stare conventis, to stand by with your agreements, conventis. Redere depositor to return debts become fiunt non honesta, dishonest by the commutata utilitate, by the changed conditions, by the changed situation. 